Hey y'all, it's Laura and welcome to day 8 of my Scrap Timber Video A Day Marathon. This is a collaboration with the Scrappy Sisters and Christy's Beautiful Life with our special guests Sarah Scraps and Moira O'Reilly, along with a lovely group of ladies joining us every single day, and all of them are linked in the description box below. Now today's sketch is one that I created and it was at the beginning of the video, but you can also check it out in our Scrap Timber Facebook group and mixing it in with the prompt, something you've been hoarding. Now for this layout, I am using my Storyline Chapters book, which is how I am scrapbooking my baby photos. Because my baby photos are really poor quality, they're from the 80s and my parents didn't have a fancy camera or anything. So I'm very thankful that I have any pictures at all and they're really poor quality. So I'm having to print them very small and I don't have a bazillion of them. So I figured that putting them in the Storyline Chapters album would make them very accessible for my kids and would fix the small photos to a large layout problem that I was having in planning this project. Now for this particular layout, I am gonna be using a digital collection that I printed out by Tracy Reed and it's called My Story Matters. And I'm going to be using strips from the three by four cards to line the right side of that left panel of this page. And I really like the mix of colors in this particular collection because my photo doesn't have a lot of color to it. It's me in my christening dress or whatever your religion calls it. It's, it's a blessing of a baby. And so it's I'm all dressed up in a really fancy little dress and my mom has me propped up on a really sweet little blanket on our couch for a photo. And I really wanted this layout to be soft and lovely, but I want the photo to stand out as well. And because it's so neutral, it's not going to do that on its own. By adding a lot of bright bold colors with some softer pastels mixed in that tie into the photo along that right side. It's gonna add a little bit more interest to the page, whereas if I just stuck to neutrals that match the photo, this may be kind of a bland layout otherwise. And I am using the white background as my background paper, like white cardstock. Uh, sometimes I did, sometimes I didn't, as you saw in the flip through of the pages I've completed at the beginning of the video. Sometimes I added in big blocks of patterned paper, sometimes I did not, but I am pretty much strictly using digital collections for this album. Because they are printed on thinner pieces of paper, they're not gonna bulk up this little notebook quite as quickly. So I want layers behind my photos. I want a background for my layouts, but I don't want to fill up this notebook with so much chunk from the papers that it becomes unwieldy in its thickness. I probably will at some point pull out some of the center pieces of paper because I know that I don't have enough photos to fill all of those pages anyway and it will reduce the bulk somewhat and I'll just do that by going to the center of the notebook and pulling out some of those and then pushing the staples back down. Pretty simple. But knowing ahead of time how many photos you have to scrap in a notebook like this is pretty helpful. Now I'm going to go ahead and line up these little strips and these uh, were ranged in size. Some of them I made bigger, some of them I made smaller, but they're around a quarter of an inch or slightly larger and they're just going to create a little stack along the right side of the page. This is a great way to use up scraps. It's a great way to use up manufacturing strips, branding strips, any little bits and pieces of paper you have. This is a brilliant way to use them. As far as what colors you can use, what I would do is find one or two papers that have several colors in them and then just grab a lot of other scraps that have those colors. So those unifying strips that have all the colors can keep the other ones coordinated and make it look planned. So even if it's not all from the same collection, you can definitely still use them together. Now, in case you're curious, these are not the original photos from my baby book or anything. These are digital copies that my brother scanned in all of our family photos. We didn't have a ton, but we have more than I expected, which is always a wonderful thing to find. And so I printed off these digital copies and tried to edit them the best I could to make them easier to see because they're just really, really poor copies. <laughs> the copies aren't bad. It's the originals that are not in great quality, which is what happens when you have older photos. Now, as far as bringing in the prompt, something you've been hoarding, I'm bringing in this American Crafts Dear Lizzie sticker book. I have absolutely been hoarding these sticker books. I've been trying to incorporate them into my stash kits every month recently, but a lot of them have barely been touched. As you can see, this one still has a whole lot of stickers left in it. And so I am trying to bring in some of those 
a little bit more often into my scrapbooking. I love these sticker books. I think I just sometimes get a bit intimidated by how much is in them and having to make decisions when you have so much to pick from can be kind of challenging. This one also happens to have quite a few planner stickers in it, and I'm not a planner girl. I don't really do lists and planning of any kind, so not really up my alley, but I do use them for other things. Sometimes I use them as little scattering pieces or tuck them under photos, however you want to use them, especially the little circle stickers. Those are great when you're doing circle layouts. You have a lot of circles on the page. You can kind of dot those little tiny ones around, and they don't have to be used specifically for planners. I really like the titles in this one though. So I'm using this kind of rose gold blissful here as my title. I'm gonna bring in a couple of the clear sticker florals and pop them on the page. They're doing pretty well in this one since they're not overlapping another color, just two pieces of white. And so they work just fine. I will add some journaling underneath of that title, but I wanted to show you on at least a few layouts this month that you can take a 12 by 12 sketch and scale it down to a different size. So there will be some storyline chapters, traveler's notebooks, nine by 12s and 12 by 12s this month to give myself and all of you a little bit of variety and show you how you can use these prompts and sketches for a multitude of projects. Now I'm going into the little words and phrases and I wanna add some little details to this long pile of scraps on the right side. So I'm pulling off some little words, I'm pulling off some little um, shapes to add on to this long strip of scraps just to make it a little bit more interesting. Also pulling in some small things like hearts and florals to add as scattering. Those are little details that I add, add on to the end of a layout to make it feel complete. Now reaching into the printable ephemera to see what I can find. I end up pulling quite a few little word phrases. I tr think I tried this tab but then decided that it didn't quite fit in and brought too much attention to the blue in those scraps and that really wasn't the focus I wanted to go for. So instead I ended up pulling in quite a few of these little word phrases and we'll layer them on top of the strips. I think this is a great way to embellish a busier long line of scraps is just to use small words. Now I do tend to include a lot of words on my layouts because I am a very wordy person. I do love to talk. I'm sure that's not a surprise. And I'm going to be doing my splattering with Nuvo alone because Heidi Swap Color Shine, which I normally use to splatter, stays tacky. So for an out of the pocket project like this, using just Nuvo, but only in small doses. So it's not really adding any bulk to the page. It's only a very, very small enamel dot shape. Works much better for a controlled splatter than using Heidi Swap Color Shine. To finish off this layout, I am gonna go ahead and add some journaling lines to with my T-square ruler. And this is a great way to add just a few or a whole bunch of lines, depending on how much you have to say. I'm not doing the journaling in this layout right now because I wanna take my finished book over to my mom's house and get some feedback from her on some of the photos. So I can include those details with the journaling that also includes kind of my thoughts and feelings on that moment. For example, seeing this photo reminds me of when my kids were blessed in the church. So little tidbit on getting some accurate journaling there. I hope you've enjoyed this layout and please check the description box below for all of the lovely ladies that are joining in every single day and on select days throughout the month. We're having a blast with Scraptember and come back tomorrow for even more inspiration. Until next time, bye y'all.